Welcome. Today I'm going to show you how to make a times table in Excel. Uh, what we're also going to do is put um, a timer onto the application so it actually times how fast the macro runs. So let's get it underway. The first thing you need to do is actually go to the developer toolbar. If you don't have the developer toolbar, you just go to File, Options, Customize Ribbon, and make sure the developer is ticked. Simple as that. Okay. First thing I'm going to do, I think I'm going to put a button on my form. So, let's do a new. Okay, so button one, button one click event. Just going to edit the text in this, saying generate times table. Really simple example, but the cell for loop works. Okay, let's switch back to the um, Alt F11. Alt F11, that was by the way. So let's let's get coding. So there's a couple of properties that we we'll need. We need to then start time, um, finish time, um, time is date. Okay. We need to have an initializer, so dim initial eyes, or I was going to use it as I. I'm going to put that as long. Um, and I want the terminator as well, so where it terminates, because we're doing a loop, we need a terminating um, value. So, next, what are we going to do? I think I'm going to assign a terminator. And I'll make that an input box. So, C int input box. Just let me explain the C int function. Um, the C int actually casts, is a casting function. So it casts whatever value you put into that uh, message bo input box as an integer value. So if you put string in there, it will throw an error. And I'll show you how to hand handle the error. Um, later on. So, um, please enter the times table end number. So, if you want to ten times table, you just hit ten. Okay, let's give it a caption. Um, times table, something like that. Okay. Uh, we want to show the default value or oh, the default value of 10. Okay. And then close your curly braces or your parentheses around the C and expression as integer function. Okay. For start, because we're going to start a timer, we want to start it with the date function now. Now exposes not only the date but it also exposes the time as well value. So that's what you need to use. If you use date, it wouldn't work correctly. Okay. Okay. Um, if there's anything in the range previously, I know we've not set the loop up yet, but I think I'm going to clear. So what I'm going to do is like range A1, so the top of the range, and then I'm going to. You select the current region. The current region is a cell. It basically knows how big the range the range is, um, and then we're going to clear its content. Okay, so that's a method, and then we're going to initiate a error handler. Go to on error. Go to uh, to call mine handler one or something like that. So now we're going to put the loop in. So we're going to initiate, initiate nested loop. So for i equals, so I'm going to start it at 1 to terminate it. Ah, I just need another value because I'm, I'm doing a nested loop. So we'll have a i as long with a dim i and q i and j as long. Okay. So 
So I want to nest a loop inside that. I'm going to do the same thing for Q equals one terminator. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to add the next now, next Q, next I, before I actually write the code in between this section. You need to write it in the section where it's nested. So insert looping code here. The green comments, by the way, are actually commented values, so they don't, they don't affect the uh, coding whatsoever. So now I'm going to use the cells function. So the cells function is the best way in VBA code to refer to your row and column index numbers. So for each row index, I'm going to use the row index as the i value. So for each one to one to terminate, so one to whatever value I've entered in the actual box. Currently, it's defaulted to ten. But that can be anywhere up to a thousand or whatever. So I to Q, then what I'm going to do is equal to I times Q, take away 50. Okay. And then what I'm going to do at the end of the next I is now I'm going to get out of the actual finish the um, the timer so I'm going to end the timer finish equals now and then I'm going to set the time value equals to finish take away start and then I'm just going to let the user know that the times table has been created times table created in what I'm going to do is I'm going to concatenate it with a value. So I'm going to concatenate it. Times create, um, sorry, times table created in, and then you concatenation. So you use parentheses to concatenate, and then I'm going to use the time value to actually say how long it took the time seconds and seconds. Okay. Um, now, because this is finished, I need to exit the sub if it's successful. If not, I need to then put my error handler code at the bottom, so handle it on. So what I'm going to do here, I'm going to put, um, I'm going to put, sorry, I'm just um, minimising something in the other window. If error dot number. So if the, if the error number froze is equal to 13, because I know that's a cast error. Message box, please. And only numerical values into the input box. Yeah, okay. And make that VB information, give it a title, error, something like that. Don't matter. Exit sub again, and then you can put else. So if it's any other error, just give me the actual, because I don't know what the error number is, give me the another message box. But this time just provide the error description value so that gives you whatever the error is but it gives it a custom message box so I can then specify if it's exit sub sorry then I can specify if I want it as a VB critical or something like that uh, plus a VB OK only value um, and put error dot I think there's a sorry error dot number doesn't need the uh, quote quotation marks so exit sub so, and if that's it. So now my code is ready to go. Okay. So I need to exit sort of the bottom of that. I don't think I do. Just let me get rid of that one. You take it, tidy it up a little. So let's run this. So let's save my project. So now, as you can see, because we set the input box. It's asking with a default value of 10, what, how many numbers do I generate up to? So for, for this sake, I'm going to say 50. Hang on, that's not right. Ah, I think I was playing around with this, this code the other day. I've, I've done the uh, loop prompt. I don't need Q, it's just I times Q. So, each one I times Q. So let's try again. Sorry about that, guys. 
so it's going to clear it. So I'm going to do 10 again. As you can see, 1 times 1 is 2. Sorry, 1 times 2 is 2. 1 times 3 is 3. 2 times 2 is 4. So 2 times 2 is 4. 3 times 2 is 6. So on 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 100. So yeah, that then generates a times table. Let's just move this out of the way slightly. So let's do a bigger value now. Let's do up to 5,000. This will take significantly longer to process. But I'm actually showing you how the timer function works. And now it will log what time it started to what time it finishes. You could improve this by taking off the screen dating. That's what you need to do is application dot screen updating equals false at the start of your code. And then application dot screen updating equals true at the end to turn it back on. Otherwise other other programs won't be able to use it. So I'll just let this tick away and see how long it uh, it'll take. Just sit up for a second. So loading do 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 yeah, still going. Yeah, as you can see, little curly circle, still going for it. it might be going for some time, yeah. It might actually use us it might cause a stack error because we're going five thousand we'll go five thousand columns over I think it's about six and a half thousand columns when it uh, causes a stack overload so we shall wait and see I'll just pause the video just while we uh, wait for this to load hi sorry about that and now it's actually completed it took around about 21 seconds because um, I re-entered 500 instead of 5000 which was taking quite a while so yeah, I mean that's how you build it. Let's just uh, go over the code again um, for you. Just use a magnifier. Okay. So it's saying button bin start time, finish time, time is date. I to J your actual variables that you need to um, iterate for your for loop. Terminator is long. Then you're saying Terminator C and my input box, please enter the times table and the number of the times table. Start equals now. Region equals current region clear contents. So it clears the current region. On a hero goes handler one. Pretty simple loop actually. And then it says for i equals one to terminator. Nested loop inside. For q equals one to terminator. Insert loop in code. So it's saying the same. For my cells i to q, I want just i row times by column next q next i uh, that's simple as that really so let me find the magnifier up close it down so yeah that's basically how you do it um in the next couple of tutorials i'm going to show you how to um create a data entry user form um mine's working for the police at the moment so um show you how I can easily set up a form so users can input into it and the analysis can be done on the back of that. Okay, thanks for watching and um, subscribe if you like the videos and keep on watching. Uh, I'll have another one posted up as soon as possible. Thanks a lot.